In this example, I need to solve for r sub 2 in this equation here. In fact, this equation or formula comes from physics from finding the resistance in a parallel circuit. So quickly reviewing these types of problems, to solve a formula for a specified variable, we need to treat that variable as if it were the only variable in the equation. Treat all the other variables as if they were numbers. So in our equation, we are trying to solve for r sub 2. And since it gets very cumbersome saying r sub 1 and r sub 2, from now on, I'm just going to say r1 and r2. As r2 is in the denominator, it's most probably going to help to clear all the denominators by multiplying every single term by the least common denominator. So to find the least common denominator, you go to your first denominator. I definitely need an R. Go to your next denominator. Do I have an R1 here? No, so I'm going to have to multiply by R1. Go to your third denominator. Do I have an R2 here? No, you're going to have to multiply by R2. So your least common denominator is R times R1 times R2. Because remember, these three variables represent different things. So now I have one, two, three terms in my expression. So I'm going to have to multiply each of them by my LCD. So I'm going to take my LCD of R, R1, R2, turn it into a fraction by dividing it by 1. And then I'm going to multiply it by the term on the left-hand side, which is 1 over r. And that equals, now I'm going to have to multiply the next term by my least common denominator. And that I multiply by the next term, which is 1 over r1. And finally, I have my third term, 1 over r2, and I'm a going to again multiply that by r, r1, r2, all divided by 1. So simplifying this first term, r's reduce, and I get left with r1 times r2 on the left-hand side. That equals, in this next term, r1 reduces with this r1 and I get left with r times r2, plus in the last term, r2 reduces, and I get left with r times r1. Now remember, we're looking for r2. How many times does it occur in this equation? Twice, in two separate terms. So I'm going to have to collect both terms that have R2 on one side of the equation. I'm going to collect them on the left-hand side. So I'm going to have to subtract R, R2 from both sides of the equation. And if you look on the left-hand side, can I combine these two terms? No, they're unlike terms, so I just have R1, R2, minus R times R2, equals the only thing left on the right-hand side is R times R1. Now, the only way to get R2 by itself is to factor it out of this expression. So I'm going to factor out my R2. Factor an R2 out of an R1, R2, the only thing left is R1, minus factor an R2 out of an R, R2, the only thing left is R, equals R times R1. Now, how is this expression in parentheses attached to R2 by multiplication? So you're going to get rid of it by dividing both sides by R1 minus R.
So these two reduce, and so we just get left with R2 equals, now can I reduce anything here? I cannot reduce this R1 with this R1 because this R1 in the denominator is not a factor of the whole denominator. Similarly, we cannot reduce this R with this R. So the answer is just R2 equals R times R1 all divided by R1 minus R. And that is our answer.